ladies and gents, this is another video brought to you by Antwood. This video is going to be about my 4,000 plus Fidoli noders and them needing a new nest. If you don't think they're that big because I have less than a year, I'll show you them after this. Now to push my Patreon agenda as it were, please check out the page. I'll put the link in the description below. There's loads of different tiers, loads of different rewards if you want to call them that or things that I do or give you guys. So uh, to say thanks for supporting my channel. But not only that, like, all the money I make from it goes back into my channel. Now check out these guys that are helping me. Thanks very much, guys, and thanks for supporting my channel. But anyway, I'll stop talking about that and crack on with the video. Those of you that follow my Instagram posts already know that I've got queens for my Fidoli Nodes. But if you didn't, here's one of the queens here. She's a young queen with wings. But anyway, this is why I need to move a new nest, to get a new nest for them, because they're rampacked in that nest. They're all in the tubing, rampacked in this nest. So I really need a new one. But not only that though, check out all this tubing. As you can see, they're full. I've not been able to get that feeder out of that outwell for the past four weeks, and this outwell's full as well. So you can clearly see I'm in desperate need to give these guys more space because their nests are full and now they're filling the outworld full of workers so I need to give them an expansion quick. Now you guys can see that I've already got them in the air den and I've also got them in the Rikushi 5.5 uh, nest so if it ain't broke don't fix it so this is why I'm going to get another MS nest this one here now they're really good I haven't done a proper review on them and I'm not going to do a proper review on this but I might do a proper review dedicated review on the 3.5 because I've got one spare waiting for my fire ants to go into but I do think they're really really good guys and as a disclaimer I've already said this is good I know Rikushi is now supporting my channel from Patreon but it's got no relevance in if I think this is good or not I like this beforehand just a disclaimer anyway you guys all know me if I don't like something I'll tell you I don't like it. And now I've never tried the humidity in this, but you can see me watering it just then, and I literally need to do this like maybe once or twice a week, if that, and even then I don't put a huge amount in, and the Fidoli seem to be doing really well, so you can't fault it. But I don't have the space for this nest, but luckily enough for me, Rikushi do have a solution to this issue, and it is these things here. Now what this enables you to do, believe it or not, is to stack the nests on top of each other that gives you enough space. Now it's really simple to install. You simply just slot it in on the side, both sides. Come on, do, do, go quicker, hood, go quicker, because it's really my video. Aha, now I'm done. And they stand up on top of the other nest and they click in equally on the bottom nest as well, as you can see. Oh, no, am I gonna do it? Ah, oh, move my camera, yay. Now you can see me and they click on just like that and they're fairly secure. Believe it or not, they are very stable. What I also like is the fact that I've got plenty of access space underneath it. So if I want to still film the primary nest, as you can see here, I can. And I really like that point. It's really, really good. Some of the bits that I needed was a T-shaped junction like this. I needed two of them to be honest, one for either side of the nest. I did put the L-shaped ones, I was going to use them, but I actually didn't. And why I didn't, I'll talk about in a second. But I favoured the, these instead, and I used two of these with two stoppers. And I'll explain why I've done that in a bit. One of the issues that I have, though, is that I generally use 12mm tubing, but Rikushi uses, like, 15mm or something like that. So it's a bit of a pain in the bum, which means I have to cut these little adapters here so I can connect them all together. And this is the finished product. Now, what you can see there is, you know, that funny shaped one that's got the stopper in the end. I've done that, so it future-proofs it. So if I do need to expand them, I don't need to worry about it. Now, they say any best laid plan, preparation is key. So I'm just making sure it all fits together properly with this. But this is what I was talking about with the Kushi tubing. They're huge. I've spoken to Rikushi about this. And I think I mentioned it in my, one of my last videos or one of my videos about his product. And he is actually moving down to a smaller size tubing, which is great because they're massive openings for MS nests, which are meant for small species. And this is the idea that I've got going together. So they have a big loop. I can clearly get my hand in there, which means I can clearly unobstructively get the camera in there to film the lower nest. And also it's a gradual increase. So the ants don't struggle to climb up a vertical. Tubing, which will be more difficult for the queens if they choose to move up here or the majors if they choose to go up here. And this bit is literally the calm before the storm, connecting the top bit on with all the tubing connections and then doing the main routes. And literally this is the calm before the storm. By far in my ant keeping history, this has got to be the hardest or the most difficult connection I've ever done when I'm connecting a nest up to an existing setup. It was, in short, a car crash. I had, well, you'll see it in a minute, but I had quite a few escapees. I killed quite a few workers in the process of trying to connect it, and I killed a major, which is a big disaster. 
But I did all the prep work, ready for it. The tubing's all connected, so all I need to do is connect this little bit together. I'm doing the most difficult one first because it'll be the biggest pain. Now, I've loosened up the tubing, and then, as any good ant keep would, I get the cotton wool to block the ends up to stop them coming out. Well, that was the plan. So I got a bit of cotton wool prepped and ready to go. I First mistake I did here, I didn't have my pokey pokey to push the cotton wool into it. So as you can see, when I disconnect it, as I'm about to do now, I'll put my thumb over both ends, or finger and thumb over both ends, so they can't get out. But then I used the cotton wool, but then I forgot my pokey pokey. Um, and my intention was to slot it straight in, but then I realized that it ain't gonna be that easy. And that was why I didn't use cotton wool for the other bit, but here's my pokey pokey. And I'm sorry for the shaky cam, there is no way around this. I, uh, when they all started escaping, they <laughs> the camera got oh, a shoulder boat barged out the way. So um, just be patient with the footage. But I think it's important to show this because um, I'm, I'm not the be all about, end all around keeping. Never said I have, never said I will be. Um, and we all make mistakes. And it's important that you guys see this as well because if you see me mess up, then hopefully you'll be better prepared and you won't mess up as much as I did. And that's why I show this stuff. You know, that is why I do it. It's to help you guys in the long run so you can learn from my mistakes. You'll notice as soon as I remove my thumb, they just start spilling out all over the place. Then the connected to the air den come out and then because of the nest is being disturbed, they will spill out of that. Um, as you can see, I try to connect it up again and I'm losing and I'm killing workers, squishing them, trying to put the cable in because they're all over the end of the uh, cable in. Tubing, because they're all in the end of the tubing. Captain Hindsight to the rescue. Oh, yeah, and there the nest disconnects again and they're spilling out everywhere. This is a running problem. I just shoulder barged it out of the way. The camera, this is what I'm talking about. Now, Captain Hindsight to the rescue here. That T-junction, I would have put a cotton wall in the other end, but I, did, I expected it to fit in smoothly, but it was a right struggle to get that bit of tubing in. As you can see, the air dent disconnected again, and now I've got majors and workers running all over the place. And this is a running trend with this. Um, these are the difficulties I've found, because the saw connector, I think it is, on the air dent isn't very secure, um, as much as I'd like it to be, and it just pops off at any whim which was the right pain. I then decide to cut my losses, put cotton wool in both ends so I can then go around police and workers because as you can see, they are getting everywhere. And I don't mind per se the smaller workers because let's be honest, in the, in the grand scheme of things of the economy, the smaller workers are expendable. But what I was concerned about is the amount of majors I had running around because they're the larders, they store the food, and they're quite a big investment for the economy. So I didn't want to see them run away, get killed or squished with me doing my, uh, cleaning them all out. I've speeded this up to times eight normal speed so you can get an idea of what I'm doing because I've got them all over my hands and I'm pushing them, dropping them into the outworld. But then I get the biggest lifesaver any ant keeper can get ever is my keyboard hoover. You can just see me doing it now. I go around with the keyboard hoover because it sucks up the ants. It's strong enough to suck them up, but it's not strong enough to hurt them. And then you can just collect them all into a little, little I don't know what they call it, little baggy thing and you can see here, I just tap it in and drop them back into the outworld. It is a lifesaver guys, I mean seriously, it is like the must have of any ant keeper and to tell you what, when I was collecting queens as well, I took this out with a little, um, like a battery charger pack you get, like the USB things, connected it up and had it in my pocket and walked around my driveway, hooving up queens, safest way to pick them up believe it or not, because it doesn't hurt them, doesn't squish them and it's just easy and then when you get them into your room or your ant cave, you can pop them into a little tub that's got barrier around it and then pick them up easily. As you can see here as well, I've disconnected the tube to the small outworld and didn't realize it. I kept on hooping up wondering where they were coming from. Unfortunately, I didn't get the footage of me connecting it all up, uh, which is disappointing, but I think I shoulder barged the camera again so you couldn't see what I was actually doing. So no point in showing it, but yet again, loads have escaped and I'm going around hoovering it up. But as you can see, this was my intention with it. Why is it going in and out of focus? I think it's because of the cat, uh, the the um, hoover's going in and out of the screen. But um, yes, uh, this is the intention that I've got. So we've got a little junction off the main channel to come round and up into the nest up top. And believe it or not, even though it was just a simple connection, this took me the best part of an hour and a half. So after this, I had to stop and have a quick break before I moved on to the front part of the nest. And after a slight break, I then moved on to the front section. Exact same principles, which you didn't see me do before. I loosened the tubing, ready to get the cotton wool in, but I've got a pokey pokey this time, so it wasn't too much of an issue. But I don't know why it's taking me so long. I'm obviously faffing with something else, probably building myself up to it. And as you also see here, there's loads of ants in the um, T-junction, and that's because 
I've connected it up the other end and they're just coming down in to see what's going on. But here was fairly smooth. I managed to connect it all up without them, without too many escapees. I've got a couple, but I'll worry about them in a bit. Oh no, I don't. I'll get my hoover out and hoover them up now. I can't remember what I did. It was only yesterday as well. <laughs> and clearly guys, I've sped this up. I don't move this fast normally. My employee at work would love me to move this fast, but I don't normally. Um, the reason for that is this video is in its natural form. It's actually like 11 minutes long. So it was quicker than the back end, but the back end a lot more little connections that made it difficult. So anyway, I pulled out the old tube in and connected that, uh, dropped that into the outworld, or just did something with it, flicked them out into the outworld. I think that's why I'm taking so long here. Um, and then I just connected it with my ready-made junction bit there. So first part of it done, fairly easy, clean up the excess workers, another major got out, but luckily enough, the major died at the other end, not this end, so disappointed at that, but I'm disappointed if I kill any of these because I, I love these ants, I don't want them to die, and when I kill them for my own actions, even though it's for the greater good as it were, it still doesn't make me happy. So I finally decided to take the plunge and then connect it all together, and compared to how all the other tubing has gone together, this went together very easily, to be honest. Didn't have too many escapees, it slotted in nicely, but, as you can see here, I've still got some cotton wool stuck in the tubing. I had two choices. One was disconnect it all and let them all escape while they're agitated and have the same issues again and pull it out, or leave it. And I decided to leave it. My logic behind that was they can, the small workers can still get past and if the majors stroke, queens want to get past, they can go the long way around through the other tubing, through the other nest and out down this way if they want to get to the outworld. So I decided to just leave it because I didn't think that the risk was worth it, to be honest. What you can see here is there's a worker stuck in the tubing by a leg. So what I've done is push down on the tubing to free it up so she can get out. And then I put her into the outworld. So I did, tried to save as many as I could, but I think that was the only one I could save. Now that it's all connected, you can see the shape that I intend to get with the tubing. So it's not too steep for them to climb up. So I've got a nice gradient that can go up. Not only that though, it still gives me plenty of access with my camera into the bottom nest if I want to do any recording. Now, going forward, I've got every intention to tidy up this setup now because I'll just keep adding to it and it's turned into a sprawling mess. So I really do want to neaten it all up because as you can see here, there's tubing everywhere. I've got two little old worlds and I need to, I need to clean it up and make it more practical because at the moment it, it is, it's difficult to do anything with it because it's just a spalling of tubing and stuff. So my future intent is to get rid of this air den nest and if they do need the space, get another MS 5.5 and stack it on top of the current nest that I've got now, if I can. Do want to get rid of these two outworlds and get one large outworld or get rid of this smaller one and make a larger outworld so I can neaten it all up as well. I have been talking to Akusha to see if he can make me a larger outworld but currently I don't have the spare cash for it so it's just gonna have to wait for a bit longer. But with removing those outworlds, I can hopefully sort out some of this sprawling cabling that's going all over the place as well. What I mean by that is that with the air den nest gone, this cabling will go because that outward's going to go as well. So all this mess here goes and then I can also move the nests around so this long sprawling long one that goes into the large outworld can go as well. Now they've got a new nest to expand into, hopefully there won't be as many running around all the tubing and stuff to make as many escapees and it'll be a lot easier process next time. Fingers crossed. I did have quite a bit of unused footage, but I'm not going to put it in a little bit extra video this time because nobody clicked on the last one. If you do guys want to see that, let me know. Just leave a comment, tell me you want to see that kind of stuff. If not, check the playlist for my Fidelis up in the top right now. Don't forget to check out my Patreon page as well. I'll put the link down below. Uh, I got these ants from NTHQ, so I'll put their link down below as well. And don't forget about the 10% discount you get from Makushi if you use the promo code ANTSHOOD. So that's it for me today then, guys. I'll see you in my next video, and bye-bye for now.